There is one singular major breaking news story out there right now that is orders of magnitude more important than every other. In fact, the vast majority of every other story people are talking about right now is tied to this one story that the powers that be, world governments, in collusion with the mainstream media, don't want you thinking about, don't want you talking about, they don't want you putting the pieces together. But we're going to show it in this video and over at Patreon, we're going to get into it even deeper, even in more detail. I promise you, this issue at the border has nothing to do with what they're talking about. Have you noticed that the pictures have all of a sudden started to disappear from the front pages of Fox and CNN and MSNBC? Nobody's talking about it anymore. Do you want to know why? Because people were starting to figure out what it was really about and what it was proving is that a massive social experiment that has been going on in this country and around the world at large for the last 30 to 40 years has failed in an epic way and it has caused a massive demographic time bomb, especially in North America, that there's only one way to fix. We have to import people and we have to do it in a hurry. Now this is battlefield of the mind stuff. We can talk about it in some generalized terms here at YouTube, but the real story broken down in terms that would make it unambiguous to anyone has to be left for Patreon these days. I'm not the only channel. There are huge, giant channels, 7, 8, 10 million subscribers that have said, we can't really talk on YouTube anymore. We have to go to Patreon. We have to go to other places over there. With the little tiny minimum allowed $1 speed bump, we can do that. I could sure use the support. Those of you who have stepped up and pledged your support, $1 a month, God bless every single one of you. Those who have stepped up at another level, at the $5 level, you guys are making the difference. You guys are keeping the channels going. It's fully refundable, though. First 90 days, no questions asked. And it's a rolling 90 days, by the way. So even after 90 days, if you still wanted the refunds, you can have them. No questions asked. Love to have you over there. Now, I'm going to start this video off by making a statement of history that is factually correct, that will set the tone for what the real message is. There was a time in this country, not so very long ago, not even 100 years ago, that if an Irish girl and an Italian guy decided that they were going to get into a relationship, it would have been cause for mass riots. There would have been street disturbances all over major cities of that area for weeks, if not months. The Irish and the Italians did not get along. The Irish were even known to stand up in Congress and say that Italians shouldn't be allowed to immigrate to the United States because they weren't truly of the uh, proper um, oh, breeding to become an American. Let's see if I can get that quote exactly right. Immigrants, the Irish and Italian love-hate relationship. Let's see if I can uh, find where that quote was. Labor leaders such as Terence Powderly, an Irish-American, portrayed the Italian workers as morally unfit to be Americans. As he said at an 1888 congressional hearing in New York, Italians were not the right class to become Americans. Sound familiar? See, it wasn't so very long ago. Now, I have a personal story. While my parents didn't necessarily have a problem with I Love Lucy. Who remembers, the, who remembers the series? It was in black and white. Cuban band leader and uh, a red-headed Irish girl. You see, their parents, however, my grandparents, were volcanic and incensed that my parents allowed us as children to watch this show. 
an Irish girl and a Cuban guy, oh my goodness. If this hadn't been in black and white, it probably wouldn't have made it one season. You see, that's how divisive things were, back in, even back in the 1950s. I'm sure a lot of you know what I'm talking about. See, as a kid, you didn't see it. I was a kid when this was on TV. You just didn't see it. But it was a big, huge deal. Lucy Desi to get eight million. This this was there's was all sorts of controversy about showing a TV show with this redheaded Irish girl and this this Cuban immigrant. Oh, it was the absolute end of the world. Now, hang on to this idea. Global fertility rates to plunge by end of the century, study says. Now, you, you want to hear the response to Dobbs on this? Everybody's so excited about Dobbs, this idea where they threw the issue of abortion, ending pregnancies in America, back to the states. You know what the result's been? Younger troops are now getting more vasectomies. You see, there's a lot of people thought, well, gosh, we get rid of, or we allow the, the banning of abortions, we'll have more kids, we'll save more lives. Younger troops, younger men, younger men are just saying, forget it. I'm going to go get the surgery done and sterilize myself. I'm going to go sterilize myself instead of have a baby. Now, this is the result of 40 years of feminism that went into schools and taught young girls that the worst thing that could ever happen to you in the world is for you to get pregnant. Do anything else in the world. Become a lesbian. Guys, go be gay. Go be gay. Nobody will get pregnant. Girls, become lesbians. Nobody will get pregnant. Here's nine million ways, including drugs that are terrible for you, that you can inject in your arm, things that you can put in your body, all this kind of stuff, because the worst thing that can happen to you is you can have a baby that would interfere with your ability to go to college and get a degree and and worship mammon basically over the last 40 to 50 years that's what's been taught even when i was in school i remember this being taught all the way back in the 80s now speaking of the 1980s not everybody bought into it and drank the kool-aid i showed this picture in another video over here way to the right is a gentleman, NFL running back, named Anthony Johnson. Lives, last I knew, just south of Jacksonville, a little place called Fruit Cove. And he married, way back in the 1980s, a young lady, it might have been the 90s when they got married, actually early 90s, uh, named Shelly. And Shelly and I graduated high school together. Everybody you see in this picture is a result of that union. Let, let me say this again. Everybody you see in this picture is a result of that union way back then. Way back in the late 80s, early 90s, Anthony Johnson, um, Shelly, they got together and they had five children. And those five children had seven grandchildren. Now, back in the late 80s, what does this have to do with Lucy and Desi and all that? Back in the late 80s, early 90s, as you can probably tell, they trace different genealogical trees going back. Let's just say it that way. They're different races. And that was incredibly, incredibly controversial back then. Especially where we were from. It was not common. It's, you know, incredibly common now. But back then, it was a huge deal. Back in the 80s and 90s. But look at the result. Look at the result. And as an aside, a quick aside, I pick on the Saudis a lot by, for a lot of good reasons. But there is one thing that the Saudis do really, really, really well. They have babies. They take family and they make it literally the number one priority in their life. They have perfect generations. They have men who understand that, that it's their role as fathers. That's why they have such huge family. And it's, my, to my mind, one of the reasons they've been so blessed, even though, yes, I know, they are imperfect and fallen and sinful, just like the rest of us. 
in many different ways. But guess who else gets it really right when it comes to families? South Americans, Latin Americans, everywhere south of our border. They get it really, really right. What's the evidence of that? Well, of all women, of all women other than those in Africa, of all women, the only women in the world who are having babies at above the replacement rate, and the reason I I exclude Africa is because they're not what we would call um, civilized world. They They live in a different state. In the civilized world, in the civilized world, Hispanic women have the highest fertility rates. And what do we see in the single most popular video on YouTube that isn't a cartoon? Single most popular video on YouTube. It's a song. It's in the entirely in the Spanish language. It is a Playboy Playmate of the Year and a guy and dancing. And they're dancing and singing about the love between a man and a woman. An actual man and an actual woman. With zero confusion whatsoever. You want to know what this is really about, this issue with Russia? They got it right. They got this right. This whole child-free babies having, having babies being the worst thing that can happen to you. They traced it to feminism and the LGBT community. This is the chief health officer in the United States right now. This is the Surgeon General. This is what is the the stand-up for U.S. health. Full-bird colonel in the Space Force. Meanwhile, in Peru legally classifying those in that community as what they had been classified since the 80s and before as mentally ill because of the destructive effect it has had on society. The reason these people are coming here is because in North America, in the last 40 years, we dropped the ball. We fumbled. And there are not enough human beings now that have been natively born in this country to fill all of the positions necessary. Much less grow an economy. That's why they're coming here and that's what they don't want you to know. Exclusive. What's behind the U.S. baby bust? Americans are prioritizing careers and leisure activities. You see, some say, oh, it's financial issues. It wasn't. It's an attitude change. It's an attitude that says, and that has been taught, and I know you know what I'm talking about. The worst thing that can happen is you get a girl pregnant. How many of you guys out there heard that? The worst thing you can ever do is is get a girl pregnant. Do anything at all but that. And here's the backup on my statistics about Hispanic women. right here fertility by race the troubling decline in the global fertility rate that's what this is all about that's what this is all about and here's a map that lays it out it's like venezuela and peru and ecuador and argentina and is this i think this is uh paraguay are doing better in the fertility rate world than the United States is as a whole. Let me say this again. You know, evil, terrible, horrible, socialist Venezuela, where people are allegedly starving to death and all this kind of nonsense? Venezuela, Ecuador, Peru, Paraguay, and Argentina are doing better. Now, This is just the reality. I know we're 14 and a half minutes in, but this might be the only chance. There's no going back and fixing this. There's no going back and fixing this. And it's the reason I started. You see, you can talk about, you know, how off-putting it might be to you that the only way that there might be an America in 50 years that we know about is that if there are those willing to come here who are willing to engage in whatever activity with whoever to have those babies. 
Because that's what's going to have to happen. Period. It's just the reality. Now, that's the reason I started way back here. There was a time when Irish and Italian would have been cause for riots. The Irish police would let the Irish guys go beat up the Italian guys. The Italian guys would then go get their mobster buddies, and they would go back, and they would. it was just back and forth and back and forth. And this went on for decades and decades and decades. And I'm sure there's people in this, listening to this video, like, why was one group of white people beating up another group of white people? Because they weren't seen as the same back then. They weren't. They were not seen as the same. Just like this. And this was, you think, well, they got over that back in the 1920s, 30s. Ask your grandparents. Ask your grandparents about the controversy between, you know, people talking about this TV show that was a comedy that was, you know, that kids were allowed to watch. Now, one final point on manipulation. This is an article from the uh, Army Times. Veteran suicide prevention algorithm favors men investigation finds. And the entire basis of the story is that, oh, women are being ignored and nobody cares, and the Army cares about their problems and all this kind of stuff. The algorithm, which the Department of Veteran Affairs uses to target assistance to patients with the highest statistical risk for self-deliverance, considers 61 variables and gives preference to veterans who are divorced and male and widowed and male, but not to any group of female veterans. Now, a lot of you ladies are like, that's horrible. That's horrible, right? Let's do the math on this. The vast majority of those engaging in self-deliverance activities are men. 6,392 reported self-deliverances in 2020. 6,042 of those were men. 97% of those activities are done by men. Veterans make up 14% of the men total men in America, but female veterans only make up 1.5%. So if you had an algorithm that was designed to help people get through this, wouldn't you aim it towards those who are 95% more likely to do it? You see, they don't tell you this. They bury this. And this is from the wiki on this. The total number of self-deliverances differs by age group. As with those in general, um, self-deliverance of veterans is primarily male, with about 97% of that being male in the states that reported gender. 97%. But you see this nowhere in this article. What does this tell you? that feminists are in control of military media. Because this is the story that the feminists want you to see. That this issue, this issue, is, once again, women are being discriminated against. They don't tell you the actual facts. They manipulate numbers to make it seem like, once again, the military is a bunch of misogynists. When nothing could be further from the truth. If the algorithm didn't target men, that would show something called misandry. It's mostly men in the military, and, and by percentage, and, and numbers, and by percentage in numbers, mostly men who are engaging in this activity. So, of course, the algorithm would do this. But you'll not hear it. You'll not hear it. Why? Because of these people. The same people who for the last 40 to 50 years have destroyed the demographics in America in concert and collusion with the LGBTQ community. Because that was the goal. That was the goal. Girl, ladies, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me that you weren't told back in high school or whenever or in college or whenever that, oh, you must do everything and anything you can to make sure that you don't get pregnant because that's the worst thing that could happen. Until you've gotten a, a doctorate and a master's and you've traveled the country and and th here we are. This is the biggest story. 
This is the story that historians in the future are going to talk about. The massive collapse of the replacement rate, of the fertility rate in North America that led to the need for mass immigrations of people. See, this idea that we're one thing and the rest of the world is another is silly. There were groups of people out there way back then that would have seen no Irish and no Italians ever mix, ever. Because they thought that's that would have been the end of America. That would have been horrible if the Irish and Italians were allowed to mix. But what do we know? And then later on, not even 100 years ago, there were people that thought that this was the end of the world. Especially the fact that they shared a bedroom and had a baby. It was the only time I ever heard my grandparents raise their voice to my parents in my presence. My parents were not quite happy about that, but this was a different time. They were absolutely, they thought this was, was just short of pornographic to them. They wouldn't, they didn't have it on the TV in their house. This no way would my grandparents either side probably was the only thing that my maternal grandparents and my paternal grandparents agreed on. My paternal grandparents were devout Pentecostals and my maternal grandparents were Southern Baptists and they didn't mix much and they didn't agree on a lot. But I tell you what, this was something they did agree on. Absolutely for sure. 100%. That was absolutely not a, uh, not an idea that they were going to uh, allow in their homes. And now we have this idea that to save what's left of this country, there's going to have to be some changes. That's all I can really say. We're going to get into this more in deeper detail at the Patreon channel because that's where I have to talk about it. And I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. It just can't be spoken of here because it just crosses a line for this platform that they don't want to talk about. So would love to have you there. Um, God bless y'all. Thank you so, so much for all of your support. Those of you that have showed up, you're make, you are the difference. You are making the difference. God bless every one of you. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. One U.S. dollar per month. That's it. God bless. Pray for each other. Have a wonderful, blessed uh, Memorial Day weekend. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.